Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the piston subassembly for the Shane White, the White and Gas engine. Um, I'm creating this subassembly for a couple of reasons. One, if I was actually building this engine, I would put the connecting rod, the piston, and the wrist pin together uh, in advance. Uh, to make sure that all of the clearances were worked out and when it's installed into the crankcase um, it would be easier if it was a subassembly and it was already connected. Um, so I'm going to treat it as if I were actually building this engine in real life. So that being said, um, here's my assembly. Uh, my units are inches, pounds, and seconds. Um, I've got my origin shown. Uh, I've got the assembly saved as piston subassembly. Um, and now I have to insert my first component. So the first component I want to add is going to be the connecting rod. But we know from experience when, we're, when we bring the connecting rod into our assembly, um, and let's say I attach it right to the origin, it becomes fixed. So it's, it's not going to move. Um, I don't think it's going to be an issue right now, but I may want it, I may want it to move. Um, good news is, is the piston is going to be attached to um, the opposite side. So um, I think we'll be okay. Let's insert the piston next. And I'll bring in the wrist pin. Okay. So, a um, couple of things we can do. We can attach the piston first and then the wrist pin after or vice versa. I don't think it really makes a difference, but I'm going to go ahead and mate the cross drilled hole in the piston to the cross drilled hole in the connecting rod. And that makes those two things concentric. But now I want to make sure that the plane that cuts through the middle of my connecting rod, in this case, would be the front plane. I want that plane to be flush with the, the plane that runs through the middle of this piston. So that would be also the front plane. So when I click the green check mark, um, those two things are in line. So if I hit the green check mark here and kind of like exit out of the mate command and take a look at my assembly, my connecting rod is fixed, so that can't, can't move. And I just mated, <clears throat> excuse me, the piston with a couple of mates, uh, but I left this one off. And you'll notice we can see as the piston is rocking in and out of the cylinder, we can see all of the clearances that we have, which we have a lot. So I think we're going to be okay in that respect. There was some concerns over this um, chamfer, but I think we'll be good. So now all we have to do is insert the, um, the wrist pin. We'll do that with a couple of concentric mates. Um, and now actually one concentric mate, but what we want to do is mate the plane that cuts to the middle of the wrist pin, uh, which is the right plane. And we want to mate that to... Um, in this case, it would be the front plane of the assembly. So now I have this, this sub-assembly which contains a piston that can, can, I mean, can pretty much pivot around. It doesn't stop when it makes contact with the part, but um, it's, it's able to move a little bit. So whatever position I leave this in, so if I leave it in this position, I shut off my origins and I click file save. 
my piston subassembly is going to save my orientation wherever I left it. And when I bring this into a main assembly, that might be an issue, but we'll, we'll get to that later on. So right now we, we just have some movement. So I'm noticing I made the length of this dowel pin the exact diameter as the piston. So what you'll notice um, when I do that, if this were a real engine, this piston is sticking out past the diameter of the piston. And that would, that would be a major issue. The engine would not run. So I am going to actually shorten up the length of this uh, just by a small amount. So um, let's try... like a 32nd of an inch. So that's a fractional size and the dowel pin is, is just below the surface of the diameter, which, um, you know, from a design standpoint, oh, and you can actually see this a little bit more interference here. So this is the great thing about SolidWorks is we can kind of design on the fly just by looking at how components are interacting with one another. So let's shrink this down a little bit more. Um, 0.42. I think 0.375 would be a little too much, but let's see. Yeah, I think that was a little bit too much. So, okay, so the length of the wrist pin uh, I have found, um, the best size would be 13 30 seconds. So that is not a standard dowel pin size. So I would probably purchase a 7 16 dowel pin and grind the ends so that they would fit nicely um, uh, in the, in the sub-assembly. So let's take a look at what this would look like um, sliced in half. Uh, so here's a cross section. And this is what I mean by uh, using SolidWorks for design is great because now we can clearly see that the flat end of the dowel pin isn't going to extend past the diameter of the piston, which would be a major issue. So if I went and purchased a 7 16 long dowel pin and installed it into this assembly, we'd, we'd have an error, an issue right away. Um, so purchasing one and grinding it down to this length would be okay, but that would have to be explained in a detailed drawing um, to let somebody know that um, that was going to happen. So there you go, custom, custom fit wrist pin. Uh, maybe that's why the author did not put a McMaster car part number because it was a custom uh, length. The diameter is standard but the length was, was ground down just enough to sit below the uh, curved surface of the piston. So I'm going to do a quick file save and I'm going to be using this subassembly and inserting it into the main assembly um, next.